This is the second of a two-part sequence about estimating embedding parameters. And like the first part of this sequence, the lecturer in this video is Joshua Garland, who was the teaching assistant the first time this course was offered. I should also say that there are a lot of pointers to useful information in the supplementary materials page about this unit. Now that we've estimated the time delay tau, we need to estimate the embedding dimension m. Fortunately, explaining the standard heuristic for estimating m is much easier than explaining the standard heuristic for estimating time delay. What we will use, and what is the standard technique in the literature, is the method of false neighbors. The basic idea behind this is that if you have not allowed enough dimensions for the attractor to unfold, there'll be crossings in the dynamics. Recall that crossings in the dynamics cannot occur for the types of dynamical systems we're looking at. So, for example, if we projected the Lorenz equation down to 2D, we would get a picture that looks like this. Notice, where the butterfly wings meet, you see several crossings. These crossings can't actually occur in this type of dynamical system, so we know this is an error caused by projection. And the method of false neighbors is completely based on this idea. It adds dimensions to the embedding, that is, it increases m until false crossings stop occurring. Or as we'll see later, there's not very many false crossings. It does this by defining something called a false neighbor. Consider this figure. In the bottom pane of this figure, you have a one-dimensional embedding of the Hanan attractor. That is, you just have a time series of the Hanan attractor. As you can see, this attractor has been projected down onto a single line. Consider the points labeled A, B, and C. If we embed the attractor in two dimensions, that is, we plot xn versus xn plus 1, or equivalently, xt, xt plus 1, we see that A and C are still neighbors, but now B has been moved to the top curve. This inflation from dimension 1 to dimension 2 has caused A and B and C and B to become false neighbors. That is, they were neighbors in dimension 1, but when you inflate it to two dimensions, they're no longer neighbors. This signifies that some kind of false crossing has occurred in the dynamics. This is the method of false near neighbors in a nutshell. What you would do is to continue to inflate the dynamics, and you would record the ratio of true neighbors to false neighbors. When the ratio of false neighbors drop below a particular threshold, generally considered to be somewhere between 10 to 30 percent, then you say that that embedding dimension is probably sufficient. So let's go through an example of this. Here, on the x-axis I have plotted embedding dimension, and on the y-axis I have plotted the fraction of false neighbors. So for example, at embedding dimension 2, there were 40% false neighbors going from one dimension to two dimensions, and there are about 15% false neighbors going from two dimensions to three dimensions. The standard heuristic for this would be to plot a line here at 10%, and then to choose the first embedding dimension that is less than that threshold. So in this case, I would pick an embedding dimension of 4. Again, note that this is simply a heuristic. It does not provide any theoretical proof that you selected the embedding dimension correctly. It can also not be used to go backwards. That is, the method of false nearest neighbors for this signal suggested m equals 4 does not suggest that the dimension of the original system was 2. That is, you cannot say, well, 2 times 2 is 4, so the original dimension of the system must have been 2, or the method of false neighbors would have given me a larger number. It is very important to distinguish when doing time series analysis, especially using heuristics like this one, that there's no theoretical proof that your embedding is correct. However, this is the standard method that's used, and it does work for most systems. Much like choosing time delay, there are several other heuristics that appear in the literature. And if delay coordinate embedding is something that's important to you, I would suggest reading through these other heuristics as well. In addition, I would recommend understanding all the different caveats of how the 10% threshold is chosen, especially with respect to noise. This will be talked about in more detail in the following section. And finally, I'd like to mention that the Tissian tool I mentioned earlier can also do this calculation for you using what's called the false nearest command.